we'll do our best. I got one last question before you leave. What is the most popular caliber yeah. for deer season? There's got to be sales or some sort of oh, data behind this. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it's a good question. I, I think... This segment of DOD TV is brought to you by Winchester Firearms, the American legend. What's up, everyone? Start over. Do over. Tim had a whole <laughs> week of vacation last week, and it shows. I had one day last week and one day this week. If I take any more, I'm Felt screwed. like an eternity. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Drew Outdoors 100% Wild Podcast. This is a special Winchester Deer Camp edition of the podcast. That's right. So we're right in the thick of the Missouri firearm season. And I know several other states opened up here as well Mm -hmm. over the weekend. Illinois' first uh, shotgun season is getting ready to come in this coming weekend. So it's that time of year, mid-November. I don't think there's any other tradition better than deer camp. And uh, we teamed up with Winchester and and that's kind of what we're shedding a little light on. And so we got a special guest from Winchester Ammunition today. Yeah, we got Jason Gilbertson joining us via zoom what's up jason (laughs) good morning how are you we're good man you know it's that time of year that we love it's deer season it's the Mm -hmm. middle of deer season middle of november and anything can happen you can finally kind of level the playing field with a firearm in hand no joke (laughs) absolutely i just have to compliment you on your choice of interior design there (laughs) <laughs> well, uh, my wife helps set up that, uh, but Ryan Kirby, the, uh, the old, the old artwork behind me, of course, comes from, from him and, you know, quite the talent. No he doubt. Is. So he I does, had to put one in there. He does a lot of stuff with Winchester as well, doesn't he? He, he does. He does. Yeah. He, he does a great job for us, but. Uh, yeah, that was one of my favorites. It, it It's November right there. So did you see <laughs> the 200 inch? I'm sure you did the 200 inch deer he killed. Crazy. He, Just he's crazy. who we should have on as a guest next. Cause I got to hear <laughs> yeah, the story seriously. of this deer. Yeah. He's been holding yeah. out on us. <laughs> he said yeah. that, uh, he felt like a jury for a day. I go, you're more <laughs> of a jury than I'll ever be. <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. incredible. <laughs> All right. Well, you want to jump into it here, Tim? Yeah. So let's, let's hop into our question of the day. Uh, it's coming to us from our buddy, Sam, who listens out all the way out in Vermont. All right. So the question of the day is probably brought to you by Winchester's deer camp. The American legends. Share your deer camp. Yeah. Hi, my name is Sam Fox from Heinsburg, Vermont. I'm calling to see your opinion on a good youth rifle for a small youth female hunter. Um, A good deer rifle for the youth, like five foot, eight, eight year old, five foot tall um, youth female hunter. Thanks. That screwed me up because I thought he was like a small (laughs) five foot eight. (laughs) that's that's not too small all right it's a good question and i think jason's got besides where he works and what he works with he's got a good background here because he's also uh got a couple kids and his son just killed a a great buck during the missouri youth season didn't he yeah yeah it was uh you know it's one of those things it can go any which way (laughs) with Mm -hmm. with kids and when you're out there and so you just try to get every everything sorted out and make sure you're you're in the right spot but but uh yeah it's a great question it's a it's a great question and one that we get a lot i mean you know you have a lot of people out there now who are trying to figure out uh recoil and what type of rifle and what type of ammo and by the time you get done sorting all that out with so many choices it's just you you should put in the homework and you should go to the range and you should really kind of set things up so that when you do have that chance everything's comfortable and you're, you're feeling good, uh, behind that rifle, you know, if a deer steps out. So, um, it, with my son specifically, and he probably fits that, uh, that, that range of height and weight that was described, He's five foot you know, <laughs> we, yeah, we started out with, uh, a two forty three. So we had a two forty three win. It was a youth model, uh, model 70 that I had bought several years ago. 
fit. It fits well. Uh, he shoots it pretty well. Um, so that was choice. Number one, we went down the path of, you know, Hey, are you comfortable behind it? And how, how well did he shoot? He, he shot it pretty well. Uh, we didn't have many opportunities, but it was a good setup. Uh, then we moved into the 350 legend. And so the 350 legend gets introduced and it was primarily introduced, you know, as a straight wall cartridge, uh, for States that, uh, allowed straight wall cartridges, you know, Iowa, Michigan, Indiana, some of those States. But what, what we realized too, after the development is low recoil and very comfortable to shoot and the grain weight on the bullets that we designed 150 grain bullet. So when you start pulling in some of the energy and the ballistics on that particular cartridge, yeah, I, I slowly moved from that 243 over to the 350 Legend. And honestly, it, it, for me and the ranges that we hunt at here in Missouri and Wisconsin, it, it's the perfect choice, in my opinion. Now, again, you're, you're going to have a lot of opinions and that's fine. But that 350 Legend, at least from a, a youth and recoil and just mm-hmm. comfortability, uh, was a, a really good choice for, for him specifically. And again, at those ranges, I feel like, uh, we, we'd probably stop right around that two two twenty five mark in his range, but, uh, could you shoot it farther? Sure. But that that's a good range for that particular cartridge. So <clears throat> with that, you know, would you compare the recoil to the two forty three as far as, you know, the type of kick that comes with it? Yeah, it'll be less. It'll be less. So about about twenty percent less in terms of recoil is what we calculated. Um, and again, there's all kinds of mathematical equations that get into that. But with the recoil being less, uh, and then just your energy deposit being more, uh, again, I think that's really the perfect scenario. A, a lot of people, especially when you're shooting at larger bodied deer or, or, you know, animals in general, you, you want to make sure your grain weight is appropriate. Um, some of the grain weights in like a 243 or they're going to be a little lower and that's fine. Uh, they're very fast. They penetrate just fine. So, and, and we make a lot of good bullets for 243 as well. But, um, that was something with 350 legend that I, I felt personally was like, wow, if I can, if I can dial back the recoil, but still maintain 150 grain bullet, that, that's a good deal. That's a, that's a good setup right there. So, and you want that, um, especially, you know, kids who maybe aren't at the range as much, you, you want to make sure that, that if that shot placement is not ideal, that you're still delivering a lot of energy that's going to deposit in that, in that, uh, deal. so. <laughs> One of the things I think as an adult, we can tend to overlook is just the sheer, uh, heaviness of a, of a firearm. Yeah. Weight, and, sheer weight of yeah, the gun itself. It's a, thank you for saying it in a different way for yes. me. <laughs> I'm talking about the mass of the gun. Yeah. And when you think about a kid <laughs> shooting a gun, Jason, how do you, how do you run that calculus, you know, shooting pod versus a bipod or a monopod or just studying out the blind window or what's your calculus there? It, yeah. So another really good thing you have to think through, <laughs> no doubt. Um, there's a couple things, right? So he, he, my son, again, going through the scenario, we're looking at a Winchester XPR. Uh, it's a, it's a great rifle that they introduced a couple of years ago. Uh, it's actually pretty light. Um, so you, you take the firearm weight, uh, you add a sling, you add your scope, um, you know, there, there you are adding more weight. Surprisingly, if you're toting that around, you do want to be mindful of that really where we hunt, we're doing a lot of in the blind or, you know, in an elevated, uh, blind in general. So we have a pretty good opportunity to set up on a bipod or on a tripod to get steady. Um, that said, you never know how the shots are going to play out. Right. So when we go to the range, we really try to think about different scenarios. So we could be, you know, clearly we might be on a bench in a lead sled and that's fine. You can start there, make sure you're on paper, make sure you're hitting, you know, inch high to hundred or wherever you decide to, to sight in at. But uh, then I try to go through a couple scenarios uh, that may just happen, right? You may end up shooting prone. You may end up shooting sitting down. You may shoot, uh, again, not necessarily offhand, but uh, in a situation where you do need to find a rest quickly. And and oddly enough, the scenario that we were in a couple weeks ago in youth season, we were not in the blind. <laughs> he, he, he ended up having to shoot prone, uh, laying on the ground, 
And he made a great shot, but we had practiced that a little bit. And, yeah. and again, I, is it always going to work out perfect? No, but if you don't go through that exercise, uh, you know, you, you may just find yourself in a, in a compromising position. So, but that's a long answer to, you know, a weight of a gun. You just want, again, you want to be comfortable with when you're pulling that up and you're getting steady and you're making sure that everything lines up from a comfortability standpoint for when you pull that trigger. Sure. Always finding myself in compromising situations. <laughs> You're kill out of that tree saddle all this past week and looked pretty compromising. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. That was kind of wacky. Yeah. So, so last night I'm at the river farm with uh, Scott, the, the guy that helps me, the camera guy, the guy that does a lot of the work on the farms and uh, he's got a hit list. I got a hit list of deer that, you know, a couple bucks each that we're after. Yep. And uh, I had the 350 legend. So on my uh, lease, I can't have a, uh, a rifle. I can only use a muzzleloader or a shotgun slug gun okay. type of a setup. It's just what the lease agreement is. Uh, <clears throat> so when we hunt the river, I, I, you know, for so many years, I I always was hunting with just a slug gun or a muzzleloader there on the, the lease. Mm -hmm. And I always wished I had a little more downrange firepower. Yeah. And uh, so now that the river is not flooded and we're hunting the river, it's been like a sigh of relief because I, I get to use a, a rifle. Big boy gun. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, I got a 30 out six, I got a 270. And then two years ago, I got this 350 legend. And I really haven't had a chance to use it at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for us, it was like, all right, finally, we got to use this 350 legend. So yeah. we go to, uh, we've been hunting there. We've had all day sit Saturday, all day sit Sunday, some great encounters, just, just not the deer we're after, but we saw a lot of good bucks. And so yesterday we went out for an afternoon hunt. We got in the stand at maybe quarter to three uh -huh. and we're sitting on, we had a south Southwest wind and the way this spot is positioned. Uh, it's a probably a half acre biologic last bite food plot that feeds into a pinch point where there's maybe 15 yards worth of timber on the river's bank, okay. the edge there. And we're sitting right there so Perfect. that we're at the end of the food plot and our wind is blowing right over the river. It's okay perfect and so we get in at quarter to three we set up and we had checked all of our trail cameras on the way in and scott's going through all the pictures uh, you know inside the dslr he's putting the cards in he's like man we have a really good chance of seeing v8 in here and that's one of the bucks that he was after and we didn't even i'm sitting there doing instagram stories <laughs> like showing the setup and and he's like i see a buck uh thrashing a tree and he's like man i you know i'm serious i'm serious and because i'm still i'm like okay because <laughs> a lot of times kid, whatever. he might see a buck, but it's not necessarily something I get excited uh -huh. about. And so he's like, I'm dead serious. <laughs> so I put the phone in my pocket. I grabbed the gun and then he's like, oh, it's a V8. So we had gone through this goat rope the, on opening day of trying to trade the gun and the camera do, 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 on another deer that he was after. And we, I screwed it up. He didn't. I, I kept holding them off because it's like the first time I touched a camera in a decade. I felt like, <laughs> Which and I'm like the forward end. Yeah. Like I couldn't get the, the monopod work in and it was just a disaster. <sighs> so I finally, I, I'm feeling uh, comfortable enough now with the camera because yeah. we did it a few times that day. So anyhow, he hands me the camera. I hand him the gun. The the all the cameras are rolling. We got tacticams and other angles and the main camera angle, and we're all rolling. And this deer steps out V eight. He's five year old eight pointer, beautiful buck. Mm -hmm. Steps out into the food plot, fifteen yards, Good. right underneath us, and uh, <laughs> he's so it, close. He was so close, and so Scott had not shot this gun. I had been shooting. We shot at the range. I yeah. shot it at the range, and but he had not shot that gun before. And uh, and all this is going to lead up to kind of Jason's point about recoil. So. Where I'm filming, he's aiming, and it's so he's so mm -hmm. far below us. And Scott's using our um uh little tree arm that we were okay. hanging our stuff off yeah. of as the the rest. Oh, but it would have been perfect for a 50 yard shot or a hundred yard yeah, shot, yeah, yeah. like a perfect rest. Well, because he was so close, Scott's angle, he was really that's tough. Just pointing straight down. And yeah. we had the scope all the way backed out at three, you know, to make sure that the the sight picture wasn't like <laughs> yeah. he could see the I fine see hairs hair. on his, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyways, I, he steps to us 
and he's starting a quarter two a little bit. Yeah. I was like, Dah, don't shoot him. And then he lifts his head head up and he looks right at us. I was like, shoot him. <laughs> Damn the torpedoes. <laughs> That's right. I mean, I, I, I guess I panicked, <laughs> but I was like, shoot him. And he puts a shot on him and his first instinct is like, he turns back to the kid deer runs off. He, he looks back at the camera. He's like this 350 legend is like shooting a 22. There's no recoil to awesome. this thing. It was, you know, we, we looked back at the footage and I, the, the way that the kind of percussion on the deer, it looked like the shot was a little more in the brisket. Uh-huh. And, and so it worried us a little bit and we waited not even two, three minutes after he shot, here comes another young buck right into the food plot from the other direction That's looking crazy it, it was crazy i'm like here comes another buck and i <laughs> he um, must be deaf <laughs> yeah so and, and well that's the thing that 350 legend isn't very loud either huh? i mean it you know it just i don't know it just seems kind of like a 22 yeah. it's weird Didn't seem to bother that buck. and so anyhow we ended up getting down out of the blind we gave maybe i don't know half hour 45 minutes we get down out of the blind while there's still light because i didn't know if we were gonna have to follow up we were texting mark and terry and bobby culbertson and you know, we really weren't sure. And so we start tracking and there's, you know, drops of blood, drops of blood. Wasn't like crazy, but good, a good, decent blood trail to follow. Okay. And then Scott sees him. He didn't run 50 yards and oh, piled sweet. up and it was, it was a, awesome. Yeah. All's well that ends well. We were able to take Scott's biggest buck yes, of his life. Scott's biggest buck ever. And we were able to take really pretty pictures there in the golden hour, oh, the sunset yeah. and in the food plot, the tree stands behind us. And it was really, really cool. But his reaction to very natural reaction was about the way the gun kicked or lack thereof. Yeah. And, um, it was just, it was just really cool. Especially twisted up like that in a tree stand. I mean, th- that can get a little awkward with a recoil from a gun and, and it would be nice to have something that isn't gonna, yeah. ma- you know, maybe make you get squirrely in your balance. Yeah. In the stand. Yeah. So it, it was always that ends well. And he, when we were field dressing him, he was field dressing him. He, I, I was dying to know what exactly hit there. Of course, I figured it was hard as, yeah. as short as he ran, but sure enough, it just blew that heart up and it was, uh, it was cool, man. It was Sweet. a, it was a fun, fun evening. So that's awesome. Thanks to Winchester and the 350 <laughs> legend. We've had a lot of good luck in camp with that. As far as Terry's, uh, camp, Terry killed one the other day on opening day, I believe. Yeah. Um, and then forced his camera guy farm hand. He killed one this morning. I believe, I think coon dog killed one at Mark's Taylor killed one at Mark's. So it's been busy gun. Yeah. It's been a good start to the, to the, you know, and it's really not like it's been crazy good weather wise, but they're just in the sure. right mood and it, it's been good enough and Heck so yeah. it, good start it's Sweet. deer camp it's deer camp week that's right so anyhow thanks to winchester and a, and a good caliber there good round well and i hope to have my first winchester deer rifle kill mm. next week i'm heading to oklahoma with mossy oak and loophole and the guys at lacrosse i've never killed a deer with a gun and so this is my maiden voyage that's right to do that so you're going to use you're borrowing my XPR Winchester XPR 270. <clears throat> yep. And I I've shot so a couple of years ago, Jason actually came in camp with us and it was the year you guys launched the Copper Impact yeah. version of Deer Season yeah. XP. And so that gun was sighted in. The last thing that that gun killed was my second biggest deer ever. It was a deer we call Kevin went 165. Jason and I killed on the same yeah. day in camp and uh, I was sighted in for that Copper Impact. But I think you're going to potentially shoot just a straight deer season XP, XP mm-hmm. on this one. It's a 150 grain bullet, I, think I believe 130 grain. 130. That's right. And, uh, you're, they're putting some mm-hmm. special new Top loophole. Secret loophole scope. Yeah. So they're taking my scope off and they're putting a new one on. Hopefully. I was very <laughs> antsy about that. Yeah. It's sighted in Don't really touch well. my stuff. <laughs> touch my drums. <laughs> That's right. We got a sound. We got a sound. If yeah. you touch my drums, I will stab you in the neck with a knife. <laughs> That's Get pretty knife extreme. Ready, <laughs> touching the scope. You're fixing to touch my scope. <laughs> it, it's not an ideal scenario, but this this scope is so like top secret. They're gonna ship it out to me ASAP and try and get it on the gun and go shoot it a little bit and then fly out to Oklahoma. Yeehaw! Here we go. Yeehaw! First hunt in Oklahoma too. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. So a lot of firsts. So Heck that's yeah. the end of this week, right? Yeah, I leave Friday. Fly out Friday awesome. Get back. So next Wednesday. week we better have a good podcast, Tim. We, we better. <laughs> I may have to do it from the road. <laughs> I'll be gone. Oh, okay. And then Thanksgiving. Oh, so that's right. No one cares about my Thanksgiving. Plans, All right, so. no. <laughs>
All right. All right. So, Jason, I know you got stuff that you have to get to. Is there anything you want to cover with us before you head out? I think we're good. I appreciate the uh, the opportunity. Thanks for uh, putting the Winchester ammo and firearms. Good, good work already this season. So enjoy watching everything you guys do. And, and uh, yeah, any questions that come up down the line, fire them away and we'll, we'll do our best. I got one last question before you leave. What is the most popular caliber yeah. for deer season? There's got to be sales or some sort of oh, data behind this. <laughs> Yeah, it, you know, it's a good question. I, I think if you were to go, you know, back in time and, and start from, you know, kind of the very beginning when, when we started cranking out certain rifles and different cartridges, you know, the, the 30, 30, the 270, the 30 odd six, those would all have, you know, tremendous value and, and history and deer camps and, you know, across the country, quite frankly, you know, when you, Fast forward and you kind of look at some of the stuff that's been introduced now, you, it's not that those cartridges are not, you know, still being used, but you're rolling into six, five Creedmoors and three fifty legends. And so you're, you're kind of, you're starting to see some of that popularity shift, uh, move into, you know, more innovation, more bullet choices, more rifle choices, better optics. So it, you know, uh, there, there's definitely rank order with certain companies on maybe what they sell more of in terms of this caliber or, or that. But, uh, you know, I, I always kind of look at it as just, you know, what's new, what's next. And clearly you put a premium on what's gotten you to this point. And those 30, thirties and two seventies and 30 odd sixes, there's a, there's a lot of deer that have been killed with those specific uh, choices, no doubt. But, you know, you, you start rolling into the new stuff and Hey, it's, it's fun to try it out. And it's fun to, you know, have the, have the camps like you're having and talk a little bit about, you know, how did, how did everything perform? So yeah, that's good. It's an evolving it's good. world. Yeah. More options. I mean, that's just <clears throat> more tools. I remember growing <laughs> up with dad's 30, 30. I mean, that was, you know, I thought that was really <laughs> something, you know, that gun, I just remember, I never got to shoot it because we never saw anything, but I held it a lot <laughs> for about fun, five or six years. Hold. I held that gun while he slept in the corner. <laughs> Some things never change. <laughs> of course. If you want a gun, it's easy to hold. That's right. Speaking of weight. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. Well, Jason, thanks for hopping on. Thanks for everything you do for the, the deer hunting. Yeah. Hunt. Yeah. Good luck in Oklahoma and uh appreciate it, guys. You guys have a good rest of the week. So all right, you too, buddy. Hope to see you in Deer Camp. We'll be not right. far from each other in the next couple days go. here. So all right, buddy. Talk there to you, you later. Go. Yeah. All right. See you guys. See yep, you, buddy. All right. So that was a special edition of, of the 100% Wild podcast. And before we depart, I got to hear the story of the tree saddle, man, because you're the only one out of these two people brave enough to use it. What if we call an audible and do that in the next show? Hey, I love it. Let's okay. do it. All, All right. right. So, so tune in next it. week That's for a deep episode number 184. Yeehaw, we're saddling up for a tree saddle hunt. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. That guy's in. super excited. We, yeah, he's the loose spring guy from the Friends in Love Places song. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned next week. Until next time, yep. identify those targets. Peace out. We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV was brought to you by Winchester Repeating Arms. 